floor is yours. Hi, thank you so much, Max, for the introduction. Let's see, uh, let's have my screen sharing ready. Yeah, so hi, I'm Ananda and I work at Feedback Food as an educational specialist and I'm very happy to be able to present to you uh, today about how uh, IE Business School has used group member evaluation to promote equal group participation. Uh, so unfortunately, they were not able to present this themselves because they were very busy with yeah, preparing for the last things like closing off this academic year. So that's why I was asked to uh, yeah, present this on their behalf. So we had a, yeah, an interview with the, the professor um, to see how she used it and how they experienced it. So I hope to give you a great overview of, of what their experiences were and yeah, how they used it. Um, so first, a little bit of background of IE Business School. So they are based in Madrid, but they have students from all over the world. And as you can see, they uh, yeah, have got, got some great rankings. So for example, they, their online MBA program has been ranked first on the QS World Ranking List. Um, and um, yeah, they've been using Feedback Foods now for a couple of years and they've tried out different uh, tools in different courses. And uh, for this webinar, we're gonna focus on their use of group member evaluation. Uh, so Max in his introduction already quickly mentioned it, but just to, um, yeah, uh, get you an understanding of what this tool does. So this is this tool um, is used for students to evaluate their peers and also their own contribution to group work. And in this way, students can really be made responsible for their own learning, uh, therefore contributing to the elimination of free writing. And it's also a great way for faculty to get insight into students' learning. So how did they use it? So they've used this in different courses of their MBA programs. And the course I'm going to focus on now today is about leading people in global, global organizations. And this was a course at the end of the MBA program in the third term. And there were 27 students in this course. So uh, a lot smaller groups as uh, with the example we've seen before. And within the course were uh, four groups of about 67 students who had to do a group project together. And at the end of the course, they had to evaluate their group members to explain how they used the tool, uh, sorry, how they um, did the group work. And um, the score that they got from their peers affected their final grade. So it was important for them to do well and to yeah, collaborate well with their peers for their end grade as well. Um, and to get you a bit of an idea of like the motivation from a teacher, this is a quote that we got from the interview. So what they wanted to do was, um, to, to have students take increased responsibility for their group work in, in their blended learning course. Uh, so they already had a blended learning um, kind of design where a part of the education was face-to-face, -face, but it was also supported by online activities. So what was their experience? So um, the professor told me that uh, they had quite minimal instructions for the students. But despite that, I think kind of confirming what we've just heard before is that uh, yeah, students were able to use the tool without much problems and they were able to give good feedback to each other using the tool. And the students reported feeling more in control of the group dynamics after using it. And also there were no more complaints about free writing, which was the case before uh, in previous years. And within the tool, there's the possibility to enable an anonymity, which means that students will not see which of their group members gave which exact feedback. And they noticed that enabling anonymity really reduced the conflict between students. And to give you a bit more detail about how they used it, so um, everyone in the course participated in reviewing. So all 27 students reviewed all of their, their peers, all of their group members, and they had to give each other scores. And it was also an option to explain their score using a comment. It was not required, but they were able to do so if they wanted. Um, and so although it was not required, they, quite some students still did. So on average, the students wrote two feedback comments to explain their ratings. And students did not need a long time to review their group members. So on average, they needed 19 minutes to, to review everyone in the course or in their group. So to give you a bit of an um, idea of, of yeah, what kind of comments they left for each other, these are two examples that we've picked out of the assignment. Uh, we've changed the names of the students to anonymize it. Um, so the first one, um, well, Chris unfortunately missed all of our group calls, according to him, because he was busy. 
this led to some confusion on his role in the team. At the end, he did deliver his part and participated actively on the forums. And the second one is really positive. So um, yeah, uh, Sarah really challenged the team to give their best, added her own point of view. Um, yeah, really added value to the discussions and was just a very pleasant person to work with. So just to give you a bit of an idea what kind of comments they left. And now to give you an even better idea, I would like to show you Oh, I wasn't sharing my video. Mm, sorry, I thought I was. Um, so, um, sorry. So to get a better idea of the assignment, um, we want to show you how they've used it in Blackboard, which is their learning management system. Uh, and yeah, because we want to protect the privacy of the students, we won't show the actual assignment, but we created a mock-up assignment in our own Blackboard environment to show you. So I am now logged in as a student. And so students can just navigate to their to the learning management system and they see a link to the, yeah, to the assignment, to the activity. And then when they open it, they um, yeah, will be seeing clear steps of what they need to do. So it starts with instructions. And then in the second step, they will be, need to um, yeah, evaluate their group members. In this case, uh, we also enabled self-assessment. So that's also an option you can include. So they, not only give feedback and evaluate their team members, but also have to reflect on, on how they think they do themselves. Um, so I've been online before, so I already gave feedback to Rick, and now I'm gonna start reviewing maths. So here on the right, you will see the different criteria, as we've also seen briefly before. Um, so I've added different types of criteria to show you the, all the possibilities. Um, so for example here, how much did your group member contribute to the project? So this is also an example of a skill rating. Um, so for example, I think four out of five. I am, as, as you can see, I can also write comments, but I don't have to. And when scrolling down there here, there are some examples of uh, rubric criteria. So for example, the criterion is attitude and there are different levels here. So unsatisfactory, needs improvement, good, excellent. And as you can see here, there's like a description from the teacher explaining yeah, what it entails to, to, for example, say that attitude needs improvement. So that really helps the student to think about, okay, what score do I need to, to select? And here in this one, they were also required to, to write a comment. So they have to write at least one comment. So I can click on write, and, and then here I can type my feedback that I have for my fellow student. Uh, for now, I'll just do it very simply. And I can add an attachment if I want to, and I can indicate if it's a compliment or a suggestion. So I can post my comment, and then it will be available for my peer to see. And then I'm um, scrolling down. One other example of a different type of criterion that can be used is just a common criterion. So this is really focused on giving qualitative feedback in the form of comments. Um, yeah, for example, to give suggestions to the student of how they can improve. Um, so to go back, of course, it's important that they can give feedback, but it's also important that they can see the feedback from others and can learn from that. So that's what's happening in this third step, so they can see the feedback, and here they can also type a reflection. That's an optional uh, part of the process, and um, yeah, to reflect on what they've learned from, from this. And as you can see here, anonymity has been enabled, so they don't see the real names of their group members, so they don't know which student gave which score. So for example, here on their contribution, you see that, um, yeah, they were uh, yeah, not completely in, they, one person said it was good and others had excellent. So they were uh, different in the score that they gave. And here on their comments, I can see what kind of comments they left to explain their score. So that basically is how it works for the students. And then to show you from the teacher perspective, um, so it's same idea, I can click on the link. So after setting it up here, I can just go to the link to yeah, view student progress and monitor their learning. So at the top, I have an overview per group and per student, um, how far they are. So can, I can see if they've given feedback, etc. And then scrolling down, there are a lot of other ways to yeah, get to know their progress. So for example, I can click here on show criteria and then per score, uh, per 
criterion and I can see what kind of scores students have given to each other. So it's an immediate, immediate overview of, uh, well, maybe, okay, contribution. Most people say it was good, but still quite some people said needs improvement. So you really have an idea of what kind of part students might be struggling with and what's really going well. And then scrolling down, for example, here you can, if you include grading, you can see that here, uh, how they've scored and you can publish the grades. And these grades will then also be synchronized with the grade book of the learning management system. So that's what I wanted to, to show you about, about their use case. Uh, are there any questions? Another, first of all, thanks so much for this great presentation. Really appreciate it. Um, would you let? We do have a question that came to the panelists. If there is a possibility to combine uh, an activity as such, a group member evaluation activity with a peer review activity with feedback groups. Yes, so we're actually working on a project now with, with called chaining and with that you can combine different type of assignments. So for example, what you can think of is that um, you would first, within that project, they would have to, yeah, have like a draft report that other students look at and they give each other feedback on a draft report and then they hand it in for example for their final uh, review by the teacher and then they also do a group memory evaluation assignment where they yeah, assess evaluate how the collaboration went within that group project and to see how everyone in the group contributed i hope that answers the question I think it does. Um, we're not we're not getting any, any any more responses on that question. So I think you did great. Um, we have one other question coming in. Um, how long does it take for students to get used to the interface? Um, well, from what I've heard, it does not take very long because it's it's quite straightforward to them. At least that's all. I always get this feedback when I talk with teachers that actually they never get any questions from the students. They just figure it out themselves. So I'm assuming it won't take that long for them to figure it out. Thanks for that. Um, one, the one from Audrey? The, we have one, move the online? Yeah. Yes, we have one more question from Audrey. Uh, how difficult it is to set up such an activity in a course? I think, well, of course, the very first time you have to kind of get to know the settings, know what, what's where, what the options are. But once you know that, it is quite easy. And um, yeah, it's also something that we can really help you with. Uh, with our support team, they're always available to help. Um, yeah, so also from that, I often hear uh, very positive feedback that it has a like clear, easy learning curve. Thanks for that, Ananda. Um, as we did with the, uh, with the other questions that uh, kept, uh, kept coming in on the peer review, if you have any, please put them in and we'll answer them in the Q&A or in the chat. Um, and with that being said, I would like, um, I would like uh, to give the stage to, uh, to Jan Heijn to discuss the future of feedback.